my pleasure to um, introduce Jane Kaufman. Okay, so, so Jane, we're so excited that, that you are with us today. And I, I have to tell everybody who's participating that the JM family has been a long time supporter of Webeck Florida. I think going back probably about 10 years now. Um, and over the years, we've done matchmakers with JM family. We've done um, events right there at, on, on your, at your corporate headquarters. And JM Family is one of those companies that, that walks the talk, right? They don't just say they support supplier diversity, they actually do um, promote supplier diversity and, and have many, many opportunities for uh, women-owned businesses to, to, to provide products and services. So Jane, I'm gonna um, start off by asking you to tell everybody your official title um, at JM Family, and then tell us how long you've been in supplier diversity and why you're so passionate about it. Okay, um, would it be okay also if I just give a little overview of JM, just because I'm not sure everybody knows that as well. Absolutely. I mean, everybody knows it's a, it's a player in South Florida, but I'm not sure everybody knows what we do. So anyway, I'm Jane Kaufman. I'm the Director of Procurement at JM Family, uh, at JM Family Enterprises. Um, we're headquartered in Deerfield Beach. Um, I've been at JM for 14 years. Um, I tell everyone, you know, started in kindergarten. And um, I have been in procurement the whole time I'm there, but my background is, is uh, I'm a lawyer, but I haven't practiced in a very long time. Um, we started a diversity, oh, so let me tell you a little bit about JM after I asked if I could. Um, JM Family is a privately owned company, a billion dollar privately owned company that, uh, our, one of our flagship uh, subsidiaries is Southeast Toyota Distributors. So we are the exclusive distributor of Toyota cars in North and South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. So if you bought one or leased one in any of those states, it came through us. There's only two private distributorships of Toyota in the United States. One is SCT, which is JM, and the other one is Gulf States Toyota in Texas. Um, also, JM Family has a lot of other areas of business. We have an indirect lending business. We have a warranty business. Um, and then in a, about two years ago, could be three at this point, uh, we bought a company called Home Franchise Concepts. And some of those um, subsidiaries of HFC might be familiar to you, uh, Budget Blinds and um, Advanta Clean, just to name a couple. And uh, Kitchen Tune-Up and Bath Tune-Up. So uh, we're... we're diversifying to um, try and stay with the times. So I started working with our team, our procurement team on um, supplier diversity. I believe it was back in 2011. So one of the nice things about being a JM family is there's a lot of people with a lot of longevity. I'm kind of even a newbie at 14 years. Um, the folks on my team that participated in supplier diversity, one is there are 17 years and the other 20. So, you know, we're all very familiar. And the idea was to try to model our program after Toyota's program. And back then, Toyota was doing, uh, was uh, sort of giving credit to suppliers and tracking suppliers who are minority owned or women owned. And I believe a few years later started with veteran owned. Um, we only do minority and women owned, you know, much smaller company, not as, you know, broad scale. Um, and, and so we've been doing that. And we've, uh, again, we follow Toyota's model of using, you know, uh, WeBank and the NSMSDC. And then we've always participated since our headquarters are in Deerfield Beach with the local Florida organization. And what we've done over the years is participate in a lot of events. Um, Nancy will tell you, I was on the board at WBDC at one point. Um, we participated in certifications. Um, I have been to going to the Greens and going for the Greens. I never got to play golf there, but that was probably a good thing for anybody who would have played with me. Um, but I, I thought it was a super event and, and we will do some virtual matchmaking. Um, and I, I want to get back to matchmaking at some point while we're talking today, though, because I had some thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what we tried to do is to put in some corporate goals, meaning track that we would have maybe 50 suppliers that are minority women owned under contract. 
and about 10% of spend. We didn't always hit our goals. And so what we found over the years was maybe there wasn't enough, you know, emphasis on it. You know, it, it waxes and wanes depending on trends and business. So over the last year, though, we have been highly focused on getting our supplier diversity um, framework even more beefed up than it was previously, kind of get some new vigor to it. Um, the company has a new internal department, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're partnering with them as well. So we're really trying to um, sort of reemphasize um, the importance of supplier diversity. And to that end, we did reach out to our counterparts at Toyota and we had wonderful discussions with them and, you know, learning about the expansion that they have done, which is not only to have, as I mentioned, minority and women owned companies and veteran owned, but they also reach out to LGBTQ organizations and, you know, they track that and they track um, disabled owned companies as well. So we don't know if we're going to put that into our mix yet, but we're in the process of investigating. Um, you know, we want to, you know, be good corporate citizens and do what's great for our community. We also know from Toyota, interestingly enough, they do a lot of community outreach and Jam Family is, is known for a lot of community outreach. We participate in everything that's going on, Feed the Hungry and Habitat for Humanity, just name it a couple off the top of my head. Um, lots of what we say associates, not employees, associate participation. If they announce an event that's coming up or let's say Habitat for Humanity, if you don't click on it to sign up, like in the first 15 minutes, you can't even get in. We, we really like that. And I know for a lot of us that have been there, I always took my kids to it too, you know, so that they could see the importance of that. So um, anyway, so we're, we're working on the community outreach as well. Toyota, we, we haven't started this yet, but one of our proposed ideas to expand supplier diversity is to help um, the organizations that are, you know, in our communities locally to learn how to do a great presentation to a corporation or once you get your foot in the door, then what? And, and to be candid, we have had um, times over the years where we have gotten somebody a foot in the door and it didn't go as well as it could have gone. Um, and so we, we think about that. We want people to be successful. Um, and also, we also have to teach our internal folks, um, you know, how to reach out into the community when they're looking for suppliers for goods or services. So we're just trying to revamp the program a little bit, but we're not there yet. We don't, you know, we're, when I say we, um, two other folks on my team, we are working on, you know, trying to add some things to our program and to put a little more oomph into it. But we are always still participating in all of the local events um, with Nancy's organization, as well as the FSMSDC. Uh, we, you know, and also um, we support Hispanic Unity as well and a bunch of other organizations too. We're just trying to figure out what makes sense as an organization to move forward and grow um, our diversity footprint. Beautiful. And you know, just as an aside, Jane, um, we can have an, an offline conversation about um, helping you with the, you've got your foot in the door now what uh, training, because we've right. got a lot of experience with, with that and we'd love to, to partner with you on, on that. So um, what does it take? And, and first off, thank you so much for, for giving this great overview of um, your commitment to supplier diversity, you know, you, you as, as an organization, right? And, and I, I love the fact that you talked about corporate responsibility goals and community outreach, because we're always telling our, our members that, you know, corporations want to see that you as a small business are also a corporate, you know, a really good corporate citizen. Um, and they'd like to see your own corporate responsibility goals and community outreach. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, so tell us, what is the process for becoming a supplier with Jam Family Enterprises? Oh, that's a great question. It's not an easy answer. So it depends on a lot of things. So there are there is a link, you know, on our our um, 
website where you can register as you know a supplier but that doesn't mean that you're a supplier that's going to get a contract i mean i think what i do is i try to go to the events and then let's say for example someone has um some sort of services some niche services that they want that they provide Often what I do is if I get that information, I forward it on to the internal business customer and say, hey, just want to let you know, I just got this information. I don't know if you have a need. And usually what they do is they'll say to me, you know, I don't at this time, but I'll hold on to it. Or they say, you know, I, what do I do next? Those kinds of things. And I try very hard not to have it sort of bottlenecked in procurement. It just, um, most of the internal customers at JM are pretty business savvy and they know what they're looking for, but we just try to always say to them, hey, have you considered this or you considered that? And like, for example, I got um, uh, an email recently from someone who was a a minority owned company, uh, the principal, and it was for something to do with government relations. And we have a government relations department, as you can imagine, being in the car business, you always wanna lobby on behalf of car dealerships and so forth. And I spoke with someone in that group, I forwarded the information on, and they just don't have any at this time. So it's not always, you know, hey, can I make a connection? And then it's a quick one and done. I think it's about, um, building a relationship or finding somebody um, in the organization that does what your organization does or needs and trying to see if you can, you know, send them some materials, a white paper, let them know a little bit about you. Um, you know, we, we typically get a lot of big players. So for things that are smaller players, um, you know, we, we just like to know. And like I said, my team does a good job of, I'd say, um, sort of working through the network at JM, which can be hard when you're on the outside. That's why I tell people, you're, if you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to, you know, send the things where they are. I feel that when somebody from procurement sends a suggestion, you know, an internal, you know, peer to peer or colleague to colleague sends a suggestion, it may get a little, get a second look. Um, whereas if, you know, if you're cold calling or just sending emails all over the place, you know, and I get a lot of those kinds of emails where, you know, they're form emails and so forth. And, you know, I can usually go through them and see, well, you know, this is a, something that we might have a need for, you know, we get a lot of, um, interest in like landscaping and janitorial services. And I forward those on because, you know, a lot of those times you need somebody that's local and you, you want to give these companies an opportunity, even if you're not getting the entire campus, there may be an opportunity for some small things. So we try to direct traffic as much as possible. Um, what we're trying to do now internally is say, you know, hey, how can we educate our internal folks on the value of doing business with these women and minority owned companies and whatever organ, other organizations we might expand to and, and reminding everybody about the corporate responsibility. Um, um, so Darcy, I will, my contact information, I don't know if Nancy provided it, but you are absolutely welcome to reach out to me um, after this. I'm always happy to take 10 or 15 minutes to talk to anyone. Um, you know, about their organization and, and how to do business, but I can't, you know, obviously I can't promise anything, but I always, I'm, I'm always happy to meet and discuss, you know, I really do understand it's not so easy. What I do also is I try to be very direct about what's available and what isn't. And Nancy and her team, Gelsey will probably know this too. You know, we are not at this point adding, um, like staffing companies, we're pretty saturated with that. So I always tell somebody, I, I'm happy to forward on your information, but I know right now we're saturated and I don't wanna waste anybody's time. You guys are so busy and hustle 24 seven. Um, that's why when I talked to Nancy about the matchmaking, I say, I, I think it's better to focus on like, 
you know, these two areas and not these other ones. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, and so same thing that it's very difficult sometimes with like technology services too. So I always try to just tell me what your niche is, tell me what your expertise is, and then I can kind of navigate internally to see who is a better person to connect you with. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank, thank you so much. You, you provided us um, with so much information there, Jane. So there is a link to register, but don't stop there, in other words, right? Go ahead and get registered because that's probably one of the first questions you will be asked in the negotiation process. The contracting process is, you know, are you officially registered with us? So you, you definitely need to do that. Building relationships, I heard you re kind of really stress that, right? That you're open to receiving email and serving kind of as a liaison in-house between supplier diversity probably and procurement. Um, so we uh, really push capabilities statements. And um, how do you feel about those? And I like them. I, to me, you need to send something to somebody. If you're sending an email, let's say, to someone who you think might have interest, you know, you know, we're also inundated with data and emails and texts and social media and everything. If, if you know what a company does in, in short order, um, then that, that helps you so much. And usually I say, do you have a white paper capability statement, an overview, some collateral material that I can say, I forward on and say, hey, I touched base with this company. Here's their whatever, let's say capability statement. Um, if you have a need. And I, and often what I usually say, if you have a need, feel free to reach out to them directly. Sometimes they'll come back to me. Sometimes um, they won't, you know, but I just try to, to make the connection as best as I can. And like I said, if I send an email, you know, internally, I feel like, it, it, well, before they delete it, if they're going to delete it, they might look at it. But if they're interested, they might say, oh, and okay, let me see what Jane sent me um, because, you know, if they know my role. Right, right, right. Is, and then you, you mentioned white papers too. And, and, and there's this big um, fallacy out there that a, that a white paper has to be like a thesis, right? And that, you know, let me just say, no, your white paper can be a couple of pages long. It's just describing your process or your expertise in a way that sets you apart from possible competition, right? So if you're in, you have a, a, a product or a service that's a bit more technical, you might want to say, this is the process for how we do it. Um, and there's a really great example of uh, a type of a white paper from one of our, our members, uh, Terry Lehman, if you go to her website, and I'm going to ask one of our team to put her website, True Green Enterprises, on in the chat for you, you can scroll down to the bottom of her page and she did an animated white paper that because her product is treeless paper products, right? So she did a short video that explains the process from the materials she uses to how she uh, manufactures and then the whole process beyond. So Think creatively in that sense um, and don't think that you have to write a 10 or a 15 or even a 20 page uh, document to send. It won't be read, right? That's why a capability statement is so important. It's one page. It's one page. It tells a lot about you. And then you could add maybe a two page capability. Um, um, what, what is the, I, I, the word? I, white the paper. white paper. Yeah, yeah, you can add that if you have that kind of business, right? The goal is to make Jane, someone in supplier diversity who deals with procurement, make her job as easy as possible by explaining exactly what you do so she can refer you directly to the right person on her team, okay? That's really, really key. So, so thanks for that, Jane. So um, what yeah, it doesn't have... And it doesn't have to be anything like a white paper. So that's just my like top of mind item, but it can be whatever. I mean, if you have a slide or two that it's in PowerPoint that explains what you guys do, I'm a real substance over a form person. If some, if, you know, and, and I also sometimes know what people are looking for. Like I know if we're going out for 
let's say, you know, a janitorial RFP or, and we have different locations and I know maybe it's in Jacksonville or stuff like that, you know, but I, I always like to be very candid though. It's, it can be frustrating. Um, it, it can take time. It, it can be like, we have these conversations. And even after, I think I spoke with you guys um, in maybe it was October and after, I think it was your anniversary uh, mm -hmm. video, anniversary Zoom, which was super fun. Um, but I had a few folks reach out to me and we spent some time talking and I couldn't tell you if either any of those folks actually got business from it. And, and I know that's the frustrating part. Um, we can't always convert, but I will always try my hardest to be as direct with you and, as I can about what's going on and try to you know, forward on whatever materials I have to uh, who I think is, you know, the right internal person, which sometimes that's half the battle is mm -hmm. finding out who would be the person that you need to connect with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I do understand that, you know, it can, it can be tough. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you. So, so let's uh, shift gears a minute and talk about certification. Um, why do you think certification is important and which certifications do you recognize? Well, okay, so I outed myself already that I'm a lawyer. So certifications are important because you need to have some sort of credible way of differentiating between, you know, companies that allege they might be this or that. And, you know, for us, we're not yet, you know, uh, it's not as if our executives are giving us like credit. So it's not like, oh gosh, there's some sort of, you know, fraud or anything. It's just that you need to have something reliable that you can say, hey, this is, you know, this company is invested to prove and to certify that they are either a minority owned or woman owned or whatever it is. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an authenticity process that we think is great. We also model after Toyota, and that was how Toyota um, started their diversity program by using the certifications. <laughs> and also, it's just one less thing that we would have to verify too. So we know there's a sense of reliability, especially because, like I said, for me, I participated in the certification process for the WBDC, and I have folks on my team who did it for the FSMSDC when it was the SFMSDC. Um, so, you know, we certainly understand what goes into that and it, you know, that's not, that's not for the faint of heart. That's, that's a lot of, you know, work and gathering of documents and, um, even on, you know, on the renewals as well. So right now, though, to answer the second part of your question, Nancy, right now, we've just been tracking minority and women-owned companies. Um, like I said, we're sort of at a point where, um, a colleague of mine and I are trying to say, you know, do we want to expand that, um, you know, it, within JM, do we want to, you know, expand our program in a different way? What are we doing? And I don't have answers for that just now, but it's something that we're, we're working on this year to say, hey, you know, we'll want to give it some bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, many of our corporate uh, partners, uh, Jane, tell us that they like to see that you have more than one certification, right? So if you are a woman and Hispanic or a woman and African-American, you, you, you should, we encourage you to get certified as a woman-owned company as well as, as a minority-owned company. Um, and that's really important because as the supplier diversity professionals are looking and reporting, year-end numbers and the like, they can report you in two categories and say, we're really making an impact in these different categories. So we encourage you, if, if you can apply for more than one certificate to do that, the really great news, ladies, is the WeBank certificate is kind of the gold standard. So if you had the information to put into the WeBank certificate, all of the supporting documents, et cetera, you know, keep those in a binder and apply for other certifications and you'll, you'll have all of the materials you already need. Okay, so uh, another question for you, Jane, what's the best way to get noticed by your team? You kind of alluded to it, but, but you know, t tell us more about how, how can I, and my small business really get noticed by you? 
I may have to answer that in the negative or how not to work. Always Maybe good easier. To. Um, I don't, I know personally, I don't like when people like send a calendar invite and you do get that sometime, you know, I'm just putting 10 minutes on your calendar. Well, yeah, that, that doesn't really work so well. Um, I think, you know, an introductory email, but I think also putting in the subject line, maybe a WBDC company or, you know, woman owned company, something that I know that would catch my eye. Um, and I, I have to say, I feel like as a representative of JM, I, I feel like it's my obligation to try and like really scan all the emails that come in that don't get, you know, stuff gets filtered out in spam. We have we have pretty, you know, significant filters, but I mean, most, most legitimate things come through, but I mean, I do try to at least scan everything and, you know, some things I, I get a lot of, you know, these form emails that are like, trust you well, and half the time it doesn't have my name in it. Um, and then I can always tell when somebody got me from LinkedIn because I don't use my maiden name at work and I do use my maiden name in uh, LinkedIn. So I can always kind of tell if it's just a blast. I mean, I don't think it has to be overly personal, but I mean, if you're sending it to me, you know, just something in the subject line that might catch my eye, or even if you reference that, you know, saw you on this call or whatever. Um, but just in general, to answer your question more generally, I think just, you know, uh, concise, uh, very clear about what it is that you're providing and that, you know, you're looking to learn more about the organization or it's our opportunities. Um, you know, I think just the direct straight way is the better way. I think people try to be very gimmicky and I don't think that goes over that well. Mm -hmm. Well, well, thank, thank you for that. So, so of no course, these are all just my opinions, but I, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I do try really hard to be as responsive as possible. So um, you kind of, you know, if I see a lot of like really, I, I'll tell you another, here we go again with the nose. Sometimes you get an email from somebody and they show like the four other emails that they sent you in the last like two weeks. And so, okay, so now I'm scolded, but okay, I'm sorry that I was like on a big project. I don't delete the emails or I'm sorry that I was out of town or, you know, maybe it just was something that looked like it was spam or generic, but, you know, give people a chance to respond. But again, if I'm always happy, you can always call me and say, I got, you know, your number from Nancy or Gelsey or whoever. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I try to take it mm -hmm. just some of those things, you know, when you get it and you're like, okay, I'm sorry, mea culpa, I was out of the office. Or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's interesting that you use the word scolding, right? Um, cause we, we do a lot of training on relationship building with our corporate partners and right. relationship building in, in, in general. And I'm taking this negotiation class. And one of the, the, the things that they're emphasizing is you want to make the other party in a negotiation, you want to make them feel valued and respected. And so, you know, if you're sending me an email that has a chain of, you know, the past three emails that you sent me that was un, 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 that were unanswered, I would really feel like you're saying you're rude how how could you not respond to me you know i would feel scolded so right. immediately the balance of power shifts right and i may feel like now i have to justify to you why i didn't write the, why i didn't respond to you and that puts me in a position of i'm not interested in doing that and i'm going to most likely you know of the majority of people jane probably won't do this but the majority of people will just put you on the bad girl list and say, you know, block the emails from this person. I don't want to feel or to start a relationship in, in that manner, right? So I, um, we, we always tell uh, our, our members that one of the best things you can do is let the person that you're trying to, to, to meet with and establish a relationship with, let them know that you know they support the WBDC Florida, right? 
and start off an email by saying, I know you support women-owned businesses because I saw you on the sponsor list of, the, of Webeck Florida. And I appreciate all that JM Family does to support women-owned businesses. I have the following kind of business. I've done some research and I think I may be able to bring you a solution for XYZ department. Now that takes all of five or six or seven sentences, right? It makes Jane feel good and it puts you in a position of being a resource. First, you're saying thank you and everybody loves to get appreciated, right? So say thank you. Secondly, you're letting Jane know that you have done your research. And thirdly, you're offering a viable solution. Okay, so that would be the first email that, that, that I would send out if I were establishing a relationship. Based on Jane's I like answer, it. Thank you. <laughs> Based on Jane's answer, you want to then follow up with maybe your capabilities statement. You want to, you know, follow um, JM family on LinkedIn, comment on their posts, look at, at what they're saying out in the media. You want to let Jane and JM Family Enterprises know that they are an important client to you and that they are part of your strategy for the next six months or for moving forward. Okay, so, so really be thoughtful and, and remember that, that the person that you're sending an email to is a person who has a job who has other obligations. So don't start off by, by, by scolding them, okay? Um, so Jane, my next question for you, and you kind of touched on this a, a bit earlier, is about opportunities, right? So we, we know that there are no staffing opportunities right now, but is, is there anything that you can kind of highlight um, for us, you know, like say in the next six months and then maybe a bit beyond? Like, are, are you all looking at any trends that, that we should know about? Um, you know, I, I tried to look through some of the things that we have going on now, but, you know, I don't really have any major trends. I mean, we, we do things that are cyclical and even when we discuss it with Toyota, the same kind of thing. So we have a lot of the same services that we do over and over again. Um, a lot, like I said, I, you know, a lot of cleaning and landscaping. And then also we don't really do on the car side, you know, there isn't as much, um, because those things definitely come straight from Toyota, but we also have a lot of, um, we do tons of it work and each, each subsidiary has sort of like their own set of it, um, products and services. So that's a great thing if there's a niche there that, you know, if you know you provide a certain kind of consulting services for that um, or have a product, you know, I, I know who to forward that on to as well or the different folks. Um, we also do a lot with benefits and HR. We also have some unusual things. We have um, planes and boats. So sometimes we are looking in the marine industry. And so that's not something that is always top of mind. Um, so that's why I say like, you just sort of never know. Um, and then, you know, we have the typical stuff, office supplies, things like that. You know, we have a vendor, but sometimes there are one-off things that we can't get or that's something unusual. We do get a lot of specialty, specialty goods folks that approach us, um, that's definitely one where I said, and we, we have some, I think, minority supply, suppliers for that. Um, we're all, we have so many events at JM Family. It's always an opportunity if you have something new and different um, for us to present to the travel team. And, you know, that's the kind of thing. Somebody sends me those things. I usually say, what, what do you have that diff would differentiate? You can't. You know, if you're sending us pads and pens with logos on it, I just know that I'm not going to get a receptive person when I forward it on. But if you have something that's interesting and different, or you have a creative team, or you can get a brand that, you know, is hard to get. I mean, those are the kinds of things that 
you know, I look for to pass on. But, you know, most of the time, if somebody sends me something and it looks sort of new and different, I do forward it on. I had somebody, <laughs> I'm laughing at Diane, is that your cat? I have uh, two cats and a puppy. And so uh, the fact that nobody has made any noise during this whole call is a miracle. Of course, when I get on my next call, which is like to present to my boss, who's going to be barking and meowing and jumping on the keyboard. Um, what was I saying? Oh, about, you know, unusual things or differentiating factors. Um, you know, anything that, that you can do that, that kind of gives me the hook when I say, hey, I got, you know, this, this company makes, you know, unusual tumblers. I've never seen anything like this. And I don't know if you guys have this. Sometimes they say to me, uh, you are so far behind the times or other times they're like, oh, great. We get this from so-and-so. But if there's a women-owned company that does that, we would love to talk to them. I mean, they certainly, you know, take it into account. Um, Anything like that. And I, I will tell you, there was, um, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, which is terrible. Um, one of the folks that I spoke with after this anniversary call that I was on with Nancy and her team in October on the communication side, we've spoken a couple of times. We had a great conversation. I forwarded her information on. I don't think anything has materialized yet, but you know, you just never know when something's going to hit. And so I try to establish a relationship with whoever reaches out to me, even if it's small, but I can always find five or 10 minutes to take a call. Um, maybe not at that moment, but, you know, I can always schedule five or 10 minutes. Um, you know, you guys do such unbelievable things and to be a woman entrepreneur is phenomenal. And, you know, Jim is definitely interested in learning about what you offer to the community. Beautiful. Thank you. And then my final question, and maybe we'll have time to take some, some questions from. Yeah, I definitely, I have a two o'clock, so sorry. Oh, okay. All right. But, so, so my, but my, you have, and I'll, I'll put my number in too. I put my email, but I'll put my number, my direct line. In too. Thank you. Thank you. So oh. can you give us an example of a success or a successful supplier? Did they pivot? Um, how did they keep in contact with you? Um, successful meaning like got under contract? Mm -hmm. Successful? So we have had a, we've had a few interesting things that have happened over the years. Sometimes we have vendors that we already have under contract and do not understand that, you know, it's a good thing for them to get certified. So we have um, helped some companies get shepherded through the certification process, but we know that they're a minority on a woman owned company. In fact, one company uh, years ago, um, it was a husband wife couple and the husband had like 51 or 52% and he passed away. And then she took over and we're like, you need to get certified. And we helped her get certified. Um, so we've had situations where, um, you know, uh, for consulting companies where we've, you know, used them over and over again, sometimes as advertising. Um, though some of those are more, I think, on the minority side. I don't know of any off the top of my head. I mean, I could look at our list. We track it, so I know. Um, but I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which ones. But um, but I, I, again, I think I already probably emphasize this a lot. Like some of the things that are like, um, you know, staffing companies and so forth, those are typically good ones. But right now we're just so, you know, saturated with that. So those are usually like quick wins. But you just never know um, what's going to be the right thing. But we've also had like success with like duct cleaning. We had someone come in who was a minority supplier. Um, there was one, it was a logistics company. You know, we ship cars from Jacksonville and um, Commerce, Georgia. So that was one that was successful. Um, we had an air conditioning company that was a minority owned company. So, you know, and usually those are, those are big ones. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And um, so I, we're not going to probably have time for questions from the audience, but let me ask you uh, another question related, because you said, you know, big, big contracts, right? Does JM Family promote second tier opportunities? Do you connect your primes with with smaller companies for sub. We don't. 
We yeah. don't. I mean, if we know if we knew of something, we would, but we don't have. I know Toyota does like level two, we tier two. We don't do that yet. We just don't have the mechanism for it. Mm -hmm. It's not something we wouldn't like to do. We would, but we just don't have the mechanism to to do it at this point. Okay. All right, beautiful. Then let me say thank you very much, Jane. This has been really, really informational. Um, I appreciate that you put not only your email address, but also your phone number um, in the, the chat. So, so ladies, take advantage of, of Jane's uh, openness and willingness to get to know you. Um, be really mindful, though, about how you send out that first email and subsequent emails, um, because as she said, there are some parameters that look good and some that don't that are not so good so so please be mindful of that and then thank you thank you jane um we hope to see you again at, at our event so with that i'll say thank you and thank you uh, goodbye everybody and see you see you next time for thank our you Wednesday so much for inviting me i appreciate it thank, thank thank you for Thanks. being here we sure. really appreciate it my pleasure all right Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Bye.